Now I'm going to simulate altering one of the files in the bag so that you can see what a verify valid failure might look like. So I'm going to come into my Governor Easley Executive Orders folder and what I'm going to do is drill down into my data directory and drill down into the Executive Orders 2005 folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these files and remove it from this folder. So what I want to do is open up another G Drive view. So I'm going to go back to my computer, open up my G Drive, and I'm just going to take this first executive order, 71 Emergency Ice and Snow, and just put it out at the top of my G Drive. Going to minimize that window. All right. So now we know that the data structure has altered. So what I'm going to do now is go back to my command window and I'm going to rerun my verify valid command. Now one thing that's really nice about your um, Windows operating system is if you hit your F3 function key that will replay or rerun the previous command. So to save you having to type in the whole command again I just hit my F3 that re-enters the previous command. I'm going to hit my enter and now Bagot is going out to validate the bag. And as we take a look at the results here, we see we have a result is false. And it also tells us what the nature of the error is. So it's the 71 emergency ice and snow file is in the manifest, but it's missing from the bag, which is actually what happened. We, we removed the file, so as Bagot went and ran through its validate process, it was expecting to find that 71 file, and it did not. Now what I want to do is replace the file. So I'm going to go back to my G drive here, and I'm going to copy this file. So use my right mouse menu, copy, come back into my bag folder, use my right mouse menu again, and select paste and bring my 71 emergency file back into my folder. So the second simulation I'm going to do is simulating a modification to the file. So I'm going to open this PDF file and I have Adobe Acrobat on my computer. So with Adobe Acrobat I can go in and make a modification to this file. So I'm just going to add a comment. and I'm going to save this file which is now actually modified that file in my bag. So let's go back to our command window and I want to rerun my bag verify valid one more time so I can use my function key F3 to re-enter the entire command, hit my enter key and it will now go ahead and rerun the verify valid and we see that once again we have a result is false which is what we expected but we see in this case that it gives us a fixity failure so the error is different so it found the file but the file was not co computing the same checksum as the original file so fixity failure means that there has been an alteration in the contents of that file so we've now seen two situations where um, that have simulated errors that you might encounter in your bag where a file has been inadvertently deleted or a file has been inadvertently modified and you would see these type of errors. So what I want to do is now put my bag back intact. So I'm just going to go back to my G drive here, copy my 71 emergency ice and snow file, come back to my uh, bag folder, use my right mouse menu again and select paste. And In this case I'm going to get a warning that the file already exists and yes I do want to replace the file. So now my original emergency ice and, no ice and snow file should be back in place. And how can I verify that? Well I'm going to go out and use my bag verify valid command. So once again hit the F3 one final time, hit my enter, and we see now that the bag is back intact and all of the, all of the files are, have been validated and are consistent with how the bag was created. So at this point we have successfully created our bag and we have validated our bag. So now what we need to do is safely disconnect our portable disk from our computer so that we can hand it off to the data receiver. 
I first want to close all of my Windows Explorer windows that are accessing the G, the G drive. So I'm going to just hit the X button in the upper right hand corner in each of these windows. And I'm also going to exit out of my command window. Now as you look in the lower right hand corner of your display, you should see a little icon that has a little green arrow on it. And if you mouse over it, you should see the hint, safely remove hardware. I'm going to click on that, and this is going to give me my safely remove hardware window. So as you look, you see that I actually have three USB mass storage devices connected to my computer. And it doesn't tell me which drive letter is associated with each one. So I'm going to start by just selecting the first one. And when I select it, this shows me that this is the E drive. I don't want to stop the E drive, so I'm just going to hit the X button to cancel out of this. I'll select the next one. This one's connected to the F drive. I don't want to stop that one either. And I'm going to select the third one, USB mass storage device. Now this one is connected to my G drive. So the way you would normally do this is by just selecting the OK button. And this should tell the operating system to go ahead and halt that device so that you could disconnect it. So I will hit the OK button. And in this case, I received an error message. As the operating system cannot release this device, so you can try disconnecting your disk using this mechanism, but if you receive this error message, this means that you are going to have to shut down your computer in order to disconnect your device. So when the computer is powered off, you can safely unplug your device. So unfortunately, in the case of this disk, we can't do a soft disconnect through the utilities. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. To access the shutdown command, you'll access the start button in the lower left hand corner and you'll see the shutdown option. So when I select the shutdown option, it's going to give me a, a confirmation window and I can restart or I can do a, a shutdown. So I would recommend since you want to shut the computer down so you can power it off, that you select the shutdown option. And then it, when the computer shuts off, you can disconnect your drive, and then you can power your computer back up. I'm not, however, going to shut down the computer at this point because I'm not going to be disconnecting my disk drive, but that is how you would do it. This completes the demonstration of creating and verifying the bag, and let's return to our slides for a quick wrap-up. We have now completed the creation of our bag, and it's on a removable device and ready for transfer. The portable disk drive can now be removed from the computer and transferred to its intended recipient. Alternatively, we could have created the bag on a shared network drive that is accessible by both the creator and the receiver, and the bag creation process would be exactly the same. In part four, we're going to shift to the data receiver's role and demonstrate how to receive and unpack the bag. If that is of interest to you, go ahead and continue with part four of the tutorial. If, however, you are only involved in creating bags to transfer, it may not be necessary for you to complete Part 4, though it may be informative to you. If you require more information concerning the procedures for transferring records to the State Records Center, you can contact your Records Management Analyst, whom you can find through one of the following links. Thanks, and this concludes Part 3, Using Bagit to Create and Transfer Bags of the Bagit Installation and Use for Transferring Digital Files tutorial.